Well, I'm going to collect my brother from the airport late this evening. And then tomorrow, I'm catching my plane early in the morning to go to Reykjavik. So that means that I won't be doing a live stream question and answer uh, next Monday, next week. And then the first one I'm planning to do will be on the 25th of December, Monday the 25th of December. As I'm sure you all know, then that's Christmas Day. And so it'd be interesting to see if anybody actually shows up. I don't expect there to be many, if any, to tell you the truth. It's funny, for probably more than 15 years, I haven't really celebrated Christmas. I think when I uh, took refuge and I decided that I was going to be a Buddhist, then to me, it seemed a bit strange to celebrate Christmas. Our uh, Lama in the retreat often wondered about this. He wondered why the Westerners were so keen uh, to do something on Christmas Day, because we don't really celebrate it in the retreat. But that's because Lama had kind of assumed that it was a religious holiday. It had something to do with worshiping Jesus Christ. And so it was very difficult to explain to him that for most people, then Christmas has nothing to do with religion. I mean, for the better ones, then it's a time where family can come together and be close and express their love for each other. But the question is, shouldn't that be something you're doing every day and not just especially on Christmas? You know, if you're a family, you should be harmonious and close and all that. But for many, then sadly, Christmas is just a form of hyper-materialism. We kind of just need to be given something. We need an excuse for a holiday. I guess it's not so bad in the West. When you look at countries like Tibet and Nepal, then traditionally, then they have many, many festivals throughout the year. There are so many festivals, it's almost impossible for the government to do any work. In a way, these people are far happier. It was the same in Tibet before the Chinese came. Then the calendar was filled with many special festivals. They all had kind of a Buddhist or religious significance. But really, although those people were quite poor and uh, lived very simple lives, I have no doubt that they are or were far happier than we are in the modern developed world. We have this feeling like if we acquire all the things we like and desire, and then that will make us happy. But I think you can admit that that's a foolish way to think. And I would say that in the West, we have far more than most people in the world. Just when it comes down to knives and forks and plates and spoons and that sort of thing, and all the way up to uh, houses and summer houses and cars and computers. Even the beggars in the street here in Canada are far more wealthy than a poor person a truly poor person in Nepal. And it's not only Christmas. We also need to be given things on our birthday. I always thought birthdays were a bit strange. It's kind of like Happy Me Day. It's like, on this day, I'm the most important thing. And I did notice this in retreat. Because in retreat, we don't celebrate birthdays. In fact, the birthday is not something that is traditionally celebrated in Tibet at all. In fact, many people don't even know when their birthday is. But in the West, it seemed to be very important. And if we don't get some kind of special treatment, or a present at least, uh, then we won't be happy. We'll feel like somehow things have gone wrong. If I could have something on my birthday, then it would have to be something significant. If you want to wish for something, you should wish for something that is important. For example, like liberation. Or even better, that everyone be happy and be free of suffering. That's the Mayana viewpoint. And it's something we need to try to develop. And the first step along that path is to reduce our self-clinging. This need for 
what we want, what we desire, this continual thought of me, me, me. Because it's this ego clinging that causes our problems. Not just for ourselves, but for others. That's because in our pursuit of happiness and well-being, then we have to step on a lot of other people's toes. You know, as we climb up that ladder. It applies to school, work, our property, all these things. We're just programmed to try to get ahead. And who are we getting ahead of? Well, we're getting ahead of our fellow sentient beings. And this is the big problem in our world. Everyone is in it for themselves. And they're all desperately scrambling to achieve their desires and their goals. This uh, way of thinking isn't so strong in poorer nations, in these third world countries. There's a far stronger sense of community that people have to pull together, work together. Really, if you go back to the time of the Buddha, then sometimes modern people have a hard time trying to understand why they went around uh, begging for their food. Many Westerners think that uh, monastics are lazy. They don't want to work for themselves. But people in those Eastern countries who have a Buddhist tradition don't feel that way. They feel that they themselves are not free or don't have the ability to dedicate themselves to the spiritual path. And so they rejoice when they see others who are spiritual practitioners. And also, they give out of a desire to accumulate merit so that they too, in future times, may have the good fortune and opportunity uh, to seek liberation from the suffering of samsara. But we don't have that way of thinking. We think very strongly of our own needs and our own desires. And most of us would not be interested in supporting a spiritual practitioner. I think at best, and this is very strong with the Malaysian community, then they kind of feel sorry for the retreatants. I mean, I only say that because I saw something they put on uh, line. A kind of uh, advertisement, maybe a begging letter to try to raise money for retreatants in Nepal. But the way it was worded was as if sort of, all oh, those poor llamas, give them some money so they can eat. That's a very odd way of thinking. Really, the people who are able to seek liberation, to achieve awakening, should be the best among us. Because truthfully, then this is the most difficult, the most difficult of goals. I mean, if you were asked, would you be able to become the President of the United States of America? I think you'd find that quite funny. Almost an impossible thing to achieve. But if you think about it, then getting name and status and fortune in this life is nothing compared to achieving final liberation that lasts lifetime after lifetime. Well, the way we see it in the Buddha Dharma, at least, is that this is the ultimate goal. It's the most significant and also difficult thing to achieve. And so compared to that, then any worldly objective is relatively simple. So you should ask yourself, am I capable of becoming the emperor of the world? or of finding a cure for cancer, single-handedly. Discovering the origins of the universe. Could I be the most successful and famous author of all time? Well, in general, our answer to these questions would be no, of course not. It's too difficult. Well, if that's the case, then something you have to understand is that Buddhahood is far more difficult than any of those things. But it's a difficult point 
And that's because we don't really believe in past and future lives. And possibly we don't even believe in something called liberation or awakening. In general, then, we only think that we can improve our own lot in this lifetime before we die. And for many people, the ultimate goal is at some point, before they get too old, is to be able to retire somewhere warm, like Mexico or something. To not have to work, and also, and also to be able to enjoy our favorite hobbies, to eat our favorite food, and drink our favorite wine every day, up until the day we die. And then it's all over. Really, that's seen as being kind of the highest worldly goal for many people. I guess the better ones amongst us, then they feel like they could maybe work for charity or develop new miracle cures, that sort of thing. And these are very wonderful and important goals to achieve. But more important than that is to resolve this issue. This issue of suffering in the six realms of samsara. And not only to go beyond that, but also find a way to liberate all sentient beings. Well, next time I see you, I'll be in Iceland or possibly the airport on the way. So until then, and see you later.